The fundamental difference between the theology of Islam and the theology of the Bible is the human incarnation of God in Yeshua, otherwise known as the multi-personality of God. Now, Muslims will argue and say, how could you worship a God who eats, who sleeps, who poops, just like us? How is that an all-powerful, omniscient God? I'm not in this video going to be defending the Trinity because I don't even believe in the Trinity because the Trinity is found nowhere in the Bible. But this video is to defend and point out that God absolutely is a multi-personal being and he's been a multi-personal being from the very beginning. And to do that, I'm going to tell a story. I'm going to tell the story of how God revealed himself to Abraham in Genesis as a man. And this story comes directly from the Hebrew Bible. None of these concepts got inserted from English translations. If you go back to the Hebrew words, God appeared to Abraham as a man. This is a story I wish both more Christians and Muslims knew. If more Christians realized this story, they wouldn't be even entertaining the arguments by Muslims about how can God become a human. And if more Muslims realized the truth of this story, they wouldn't become Muslims because they'd realize that Islam is just straight up false. So getting right into it, we're going to be reading from Genesis 18 through 19. Now typically I would read from the New Living Translation because it's a lot easier to understand. However, the New Living Translation does not capture the original Hebrew word and the original Hebrew concept in this very specific story. So we're going to be reading from the New King James Version. For a bit of context, in the chapters before, we had Abram receiving the covenant from God because of his faith in God and his bravery. Now, in chapter 18, we go to the famous Sodom and Gomorrah story. Buckle up, because this is a story time. This is not a Bible study. This is a lot more than God's word. This is God's story, and so it needs to be told as such. Then the Lord appeared to him by the terebinth trees of Mamre, as he was sitting in the tent door in the heat of the day. So he lifted his eyes and looked, and behold, three men, catch it, Three men were standing by him, and when he saw them, he ran from the tent door to meet them and bowed himself to the ground and said, My Lord, if I have now found favor in your sight, do not pass on by your servant. Please let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree, and I will bring a morsel of bread that you may refresh your heart. After that, you may pass by inasmuch as you have come to your servant. They said, Do as you have said. So Abraham hurried into the tent to Sarah and said, Quickly, make ready three measures of fine meal, knead it, and make cakes. And Abraham ran to the herd, took a tender and good calf, gave it to a young man, and he hastened to prepare it. So he took butter and milk and the calf which he had prepared and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree as they ate. Then they said to him, Where is Sarah your wife? So he said, Here in the tent. And he said, I will certainly return to you according to the time of life. And behold, Sarah, your wife, shall have a son. Sarah was listening in the tent door which was behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, well advanced in age, and Sarah had passed the age of childbearing. Therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I have grown old, shall I have pleasure, my lord, being old also? And the Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I surely bear a child since I am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the appointed time I will return to you according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. But Sarah denied it, saying, I did not laugh. For she was afraid, and he said, No, but you did laugh. Then the men rose from there and looked toward Sodom, and Abraham went with them to send them on their way. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham what I am doing? For I have known him in order that he may command his children and his household after him, that they may keep the way of the Lord and do righteousness and justice, that the Lord may bring to Abraham what he has spoken to him. And the Lord said, Because the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is great, because their sin is grave, I will go down now and see whether they have done all together according to the outcry against it that has come to me. And if not, I will know. Then the men, who? The men, turned away from there and went toward Sodom. But Abraham still stood before the Lord. Okay, so remember, three men approached Abraham, a few men went away, and Abraham stood there with the Lord. Now we get to a very interesting part of the scripture. This is where pretty much Abraham is bargaining with the Lord, asking him, if you find this many righteous people, are you going to destroy the whole city with the righteous? And God says, no, I wouldn't. And then he keeps on lowering the number and lowering the number. Why is he doing that? 
because he understands and knows that he has relatives, Lot, who still lives within the city. So when Abraham is bargaining with God, he, I think, stops at the number 10. And God, the Lord, Yahweh, Yahweh, goes about his way to Sodom. Fast forward to chapter 19. Now the two angels came to Sodom in the evening, and Lot was sitting in the gate of Sodom. When Lot saw them, he rose to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face towards the ground. And he said, Hear now, my lords, please turn into your servant's house and spend the night and wash your feet. Then you may rise early and go on your way. And they said, No, but we will spend the night in the open square. But he insisted strongly. So they turned into him and entered his house. Then he made them a feast and baked unleavened bread, and they ate. Now before they lay down, the men of the city, the men of Sodom, both old and young, all the people from every quarter surrounded the house. And they called to Lot and said to him, Where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out to us so that we may know them carnally. This is obviously referring to sex. And what we'll see is in the next verse, So Lot went out to them through the doorway, shut the door behind him, and said, Please, my brethren, do not do so wickedly. See now, I have two daughters who have not known a man. Please let me bring them out to you, and you may do to them as you wish. Only do nothing to these men, since this is the reason they have come under the shadow of my roof. Now, a funny side note. People will look at this passage and they will say the Bible is condoning the rape of women. When Lot is offering his two daughters up to the men of the city to pretty much be raped, that is the condoning of that. But if we see from the previous passage, Abraham is bargaining with God on sparing the righteous. And then we go to a chapter later and we see Lot, obviously unrighteous, obviously doing something that is sinful, offering up his daughters to be raped, and God still ends up saving him. So that just proves and shows to you the deeper story that is being told here. God saves the unrighteous. Now we get to the most important part of this video right here. If we backtrack to the last verse of chapter 18, we see, So the Lord, all caps again, went his way as soon as he was finished speaking with Abraham, and Abraham returned to his place. Remember, two angels, the two men, had already left, leaving Abraham and God. They were doing their bargaining. And then God himself leaves Abraham to judge Sodom and Gomorrah. Go to chapter 19, verse 24, and see what the original Hebrew says. Side note, whenever the Old Testament uses the caps Lord, that is indicative of the name of God, Yahuwah or Yahweh. Whenever there is lowercase Lord, that is typically indicative of the Hebrew word Adonai. Then the Lord, all caps, rained brimstone and fire on Sodom and Gomorrah from the Lord out of the heavens. And if we go into the Hebrew, that is Yahuwah and Yahuwah, meaning the Lord on the ground who had just left Abraham, rained fire and brimstone from the Lord, Yahuwah, out of heaven, meaning that God is multipersonal. And this is from the first book of the Bible. So whenever Muslims say that God cannot be a human, bring them to this chapter and this story right here. Ask them, how could there be two Yahuwah? That makes no sense if God is simply a singular person. And this chapter should be the death nail for Islam because the whole point of Islam is that God is not a human. God is separate from human. That is shirk, comparing God to a human. Well, why does Islam claim to be a part of the same revelation as what was given to Abraham and the children of Israel when from the very first chapter, God appears to Abraham as a man? 